Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will review a paper which is a meta-analysis on the hypotension episodes during intensive care stay and its association with the mortality and morbidity. This paper was published in Intensive Care Medicine. Maintaining adequate perfusion pressure in vital organs is crucial in critical care to prevent organ damage. Due to challenges in directly measuring this organ perfusion, we measure blood pressure as a proxy. Blood pressure is routinely monitored continuously in the ICU to manage and maintain normotensive levels in critically ill patients. The definitions of hypotension vary with 140 distinct definitions being noted, complicating the comparison among the studies. These definitions differ in parameters like systolic, mean arterial, thresholds, that is absolute or relative and the duration of this drop. Now the common threshold in ICU is have a, a map which is below 65 millimeters of mercury which is commonly used across most of the ICUs as a definition for hypotension. Numerous studies mainly retrospective and observational indicate a relationship between ICU hypotension and the organ damage which intensifies with deeper and prolonged hypotension. Despite numerous studies, there are no RCTs examining the impact of hypotension on hyperperfusion related complications. Existing RCTs with neutral outcomes have maintained blood pressure targets above the hypotension threshold. There is an absence of comprehensive summary of literature on how different hypotension definitions affect patient outcomes during ICU stay. This systematic review aims to assess the literature on associations between hypotension during ICU stay, outcomes like mortality and morbidity, hypothesizing that hypotension exposure correlates with increased mortality and morbidity influenced by severity and the duration of the hypotension. In the methods, the systematic review adhered to the Cochrane Handbook and the PRISMA guidelines. The review protocol was registered in Prospero. A clinician librarian assisted in searching PubMed, Embase and Cochrane Central Registry and articles up to October 17th, 2022. The search utilized MESH, free terms and synonyms related to ICU hypotension and specific outcomes. Two independent reviewers screened the titles, abstracts and full texts using RAND review program Discrepancies were resolved by consulting a third reviewer. Studies included involved adults, that is aged 16 years and older, reporting on the association between hypotension during ICU stay, mortality and morbidity. Excluded were case reports, literature studies, non-English articles, articles without full texts or a clear definition of hypotension, studies on hypotension during specific procedures like renal replacement therapy and studies with inadequate sample size defined by less than one event in either of the hypotension or non-hypotension group. In case of multiple articles from the same patient cohort, the article with the least potential bias was selected. If bias potential was equivalent, the article using the most common definition was chosen. Data extraction was conducted in duplicate using a predefined template to ensure the accuracy with discrepancies resolved by revisiting the original article. Extracted data included data design, the patient characteristics, definition of hypotension and outcomes, type of blood pressure measurement used and specific outcome data. Quality of the included studies was assessed using the Cochrane Risk of Bias tool for randomized trial and Newcastle Ottawa scale for non-randomized studies with assessments performed in duplicate and bind to each other's evaluation. The review included 122 articles encompassing 1,76,329 patients. A significant association was found between ICU hypotension exposure, increased mortality and AKI rates. Associations intensified with greater severity of hypotension, particularly noted when the MAP fell below 60 or systolic fell below 90 and MAP below 55 for AKI. 
what were the objectives of the study the object was to provide descriptive overview of the association between icu hypertension exposure and pre specified patient outcomes secondary outcome was determine the overall direction of these association through the meta analysis explore the exposure severity relationship identify specific harm thresholds for the hypertension the outcomes mortality aki myocardial infarction cerebrovascular accidents delirium poor cognitive function icu length of stay duration of ventilation quality of life post icu care syndrome and who das score were assessed study design specifics were to provide confounder adjusted analysis to ensure a unbiased estimate of the association between hypotension and the outcome eligibility for meta analysis only studies examining the relationship between hypertension and a predefined outcome where the observational studies needed to report confounding adjusted outcome with adjusted odds ratio relative risk and hazard ratio at least 3 studies per outcome were required to perform a meta analysis using the same outcome measure frequently reported measures include adjusted odds ratio for mortality hazard ratio for myocardial infarction which were prioritized in the meta analysis handlings of different definitions for studies reporting multiple definitions of hypertension or outcome map less than 65 and spp less than 90 the most commonly reported definition in other study was used studies that reported association for multiple outcomes were included in each relevant meta analysis now the methods random effect meta analysis using inverse variance method was typically employed reflecting the variability in the study effect now if you are wondering if you can do a meta analysis you can see our videos which we have already posted fixed effect meta analysis was used when fewer than 6 articles were available per outcome due to insufficient data for estimating between study variants the i square statistical estimate to the percentage of variance due to in between study variation was noted funnel plots and peters test a variant of the macaskill test assessed potential publication bias and funnel plot asymmetry considering expected between study variations from previous reviews if at least three studies reported the same icu patient population sub subgroup analysis was conducted to explore patient specific effects sensitivity analysis first it included studies not originally designed to examine the hypertension outcome relationship but which reported hypertension related outcomes from multi variable analysis this analysis tested the robustness of the main finding now second sensitivity is considered all studies providing any form of odds ratio aim to minimize the impact of excluding studies due to variability in the reported outcome measure now exploratory strategy conducted by stratifying the studies based on severity of the hypertension to understand its effect on mortality and aki challenges with the hypertension definition a wide variety of hypertension definitions are being used no consensus on definitive hypertension scale was reached particularly in terms of severity of map or sbp definition The expert panel was involved and panel of 9 intensivists was tasked to rank the hypertension definition based on perceived clinical severity ranking was done on a scale of 1 to 9 with 9 indicating the most severe form of hypertension definitions perceived as equal severe by the panel received the same ranking score Now how was this implemented the median ranking assigned by the expert panel was used to categorize hypertension into three perceived severity levels mild moderate or severe implementation of this the intended stratification by hypertension severity face challenges due to the limited variety of hypertension definition in these studies specifically designed to investigate the hypertension outcome consequently all studies reporting a hypertension related outcome measure from multivariable analysis included in the exploratory meta analysis aligned with the approach used in the first sensitivity analysis so coming to the results from the database the Uh, could find 6600 papers out of this they removed 1747 because there were duplicates then they screened 4865 and excluded 4334 the such short retrieval of 531 12 could not be retrieved reports oh, finally which were eligible were 519 out of this they excluded 397 because 
it describes the influence of factor other than hypotension that is 179 describes an effect of an outcome other than the predefined ones which we have already discussed which is 90 the study population included pediatric or non icu which was 86 not an original research study was 24 no definition was at all given was in 10 and non-english articles were 8 so they finally could include 122 the studies included in the primary analysis was 18 again the so this is the summary in terms of mortality if you look at the i square it is 94 which says there is a lot of variation in the study but overall you can see the no outcome no hypotension is definitely has has a better outcome compared to no compared to the one where the patient has hypotension so having hypotension increases your risk of dying so if we look in terms of the aki here you can see the outcomes were rrt and here you can see that no hypotension favors not having rrt however the i square is 54 so that is a uh, interstudy variability so the key findings are exposure to hypertension during ICU is associated with increased mortality and morbidity with meta-analysis and sensitivity analysis supporting this link. However, the results were mixed for association with AKI. Studies reporting multiple gradations of hypertension showed a stronger association with worse patient outcomes with the severest form of hypertension. Definition associated with more consistent mortality and AKI was a map below 60 or a map below 55 respectively results align with the previous systematic reviews on intraoperative hypertension so what are the limitations of this study few rcts are here and there is a variability as we have already discussed in terms of the definition most studies include not primarily focusing on this particular outcomes so what are the methodological challenges a vast range of hypertension definition makes a specificity lacking Stratifying the studies based on the subgroup was limited and the meta-analysis could not comprehensively address the potential confounding factors due to the heterogeneity in the reporting pattern, which was shown in the I-square. Now, exploratory meta-analysis limitations, that is inadequate number of studies classifying as mild and severe and the reliance on expert opinion on hypertension ranking is not validated. Recommendation for future research is future intervention trials should focus on actively treating each hypertension episode or preventing hypertension rather than merely comparing blood pressure targets. Observational studies should clearly define the threshold and duration of the hypertensive events, explore multiple definitions of hypertension and treat hypertension exposure as a continuous variable to better understand the causal relationship between hypertension and ICU stay and patient outcomes. Now, what is the conclusion based on this? The exposure to hypertension is conclusively linked with mortality and there is a association with higher risk of AKI as well. The risk of both mortality and AKI escalates with the severity where a MAP less than 60 or systolic less than 90 is associated with mortality and a MAP less than 55 is associated with AKI. So, what is the impact on clinical practice? As of now, these findings emphasize the critical need to monitor the patients manage the blood pressure actively in ICU to mitigate the risk of hypertension. Establishing and adhering to appropriate thresholds for intervention that is MAP less than 60 or SBP less than 90 can guide clinical decisions and interventions more effectively. The data supports the development and implementations of targeted intervention strategies and protocols to prevent severe hypertension, potentially improving patient outcomes. Future research should focus on interventional studies tailored to specific patient populations to clearly establish the causal relationship, refine the treatment guidelines based on the varying levels of hypertension severity. Thank you for your patience.